at a certain level of analysis, it's always the same old story. The medieval Christians did a pretty good job of laying out the landscape of sin. So what tempts us? Well, pride for sure. We celebrate pride as a matter of fact. We devote a substantial amount of time and resources to the celebration of pride. We celebrate hedonism as well, oh, yeah. especially on the sexual front, but with our celebration of materialism in general. And that's a bad idea, not least because if you worship hedonism and you celebrate pleasure, you destroy the source of pleasure itself. It doesn't work. So I'll give you an example Please. of that. The people who have go. the most sex now are religious married people. Right, so that's a very comical end to the sexual revolution. The sexual revolution promised constant orgiastic satisfaction to everyone, who, no matter who they might be. And there's a story in Revelation, it's a very interesting story, an image. It's an image of the end of time, and it has two components. One component is the scarlet beast, and the scarlet beast is blood-colored, and it's patriarchal, it's male, it has multiple heads. And so what it represents is the masculine social world, the patriarchy, when it degenerates. Okay, so a society that's well-structured and a psyche that's well-structured should be a unity. Okay, when that unity falls apart, so when God dies, when that unity falls apart, you get something with many heads because it's confused. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the degenerate patriarchal state. Mm -hmm. And it's blood-colored because that's the precursor to a further degeneration into the chaos that destroys everything. So that's the scarlet beast of the state. That's the degeneration of the masculine. Okay, on top of that, in this image, which is an image of the end of times, you have the whore of Babylon. Okay, in the biblical text, Babylon is the hedonistic tyranny. That's really what it stands for. And the whore of Babylon is a woman, a beautiful woman, attired in materialistic costuming in gold, holding a cup full of the liquids of her fornication. What she represents is if the masculine deteriorates, so does the feminine. And when the feminine deteriorates, it commodifies sexuality. That's the hallmark of the deteriorating feminine, the commodification of sexuality. You see that now with the incredibly widespread dispersion of pornography, about 30% of internet traffic, something like that. And of course, when the security that marriage, monogamous marriage, and an integrated male state, when that disappears, one of the tempting pathways for women is the commodification of sexuality. Okay, so that's an end time image. The feminine deteriorates and the masculine. There's a kicker though. The beast kills the prostitute. So what that implies is that the degenerate masculine state offers hedonistic pleasure as a enticement to slavery and then kills the source of pleasure itself and that's exactly right we see that because yep. what's happening is that as the sexual revolution progressed and hedonism ruled sex itself started to vanish so 30 percent of japanese young people under the age of 30 are virgins and it's not only japan you see the same pattern in south korea and they're only like 10 years ahead of the west in general on the developmental curve i don't think that sex can sustain itself in the absence of a monogamous framework well, this is also what you see reflected in the fact that it's married religious couples who have the most sex. It's like, we don't know, sex is a complicated business and it's as complicated as survival, right? Reproduction and survival, those are the two big challenges. And the idea that sex can be handled simply and simply as a matter of mere momentary pleasure, there's no reason to assume that's true. Now, that was the promise of the sexual revolution. It's now 60 years since the sexual revolution, and we can see that it's not delivering on its promises. Quite the contrary. It's destroying what it set out to free. The, the empirical data show very clearly that it is literally now that religious married couples are having the best sexual lives. And so, you know, it might even be under those conditions that that sexual life is rarely optimal. But then you should ask yourself too, why should it be any less difficult to optimize your sexual life than it is to optimize anything else that you do? It's a very difficult thing to manage. Now you might say, well, it's even more difficult to manage in a monogamous relationship. It's like, I don't think there's any evidence whatsoever for that claim. <laughs> Most people's solution to the dating problem is to find someone and quit dating. And the reason for that is because the dating life is not preferable to not having the partner that you want. And you might say, well, there's still problems if you have the partner you want. It's like, well, you're probably the problem.